Is everybody ready? Want to get started? Good? Okay. Okay, so if everybody wanted to take a minute as well, if you haven't already downloaded all of the assets, they're in our um, Zoom link chat. If you click on that, it'll just lead you to a Google Drive folder, so you can download all the assets and follow along with the tutorials if you'd like. Um, but hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our School for the Gifted workshop. It's the first of CSCA's kind, so we hope you like it. Um, I'm Danielle Scott. I am CSCA's VP of events this year. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with us through rescheduling not once, but twice. So we're really excited for this event. Um, so okay. um, so we encourage everyone to ask questions. It's a, um, it's, we want this to be very interactive and for everyone to get all the questions they need answered. So in order to raise your hand, you can just go under participants and raise hand. Um, if you need help, you can always um, hit us up in the chat. Sorry. Um, and then we will call on you whenever the speaker is available. Um, okay. And then just a quick agenda. We're just going to be going through the history and backgrounds of gifts just to start off. And then we will be going through some gift making and exporting in Photoshop and um, how to use your gifts and just all the specs that'll also be in the um, folder after the fact as well. And then how to do some just general gift making in After Effects and exporting along with that and then Lastly, gifts in Keynote, just some little tips and tricks there. So, and then at the very end, we will have a Q&A portion. So if you have anything you need to ask at the end, we will have that available and we have our personal information if you would like to reach out to one of us after the fact. So without further ado, I think Elliot can get us started off with some uh, history of gifts. Yep, happy to, just give me one second here. Uh, I will share my screen. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, we can all see this, right? My name is Elliot Senemo. I'm uh, a motion graphic designer, freelance motion graphic designer, and I'm an adjunct professor at uh, CCAD. And I'm going to be going through uh, the surprisingly exciting history of, uh, of gifts. So um, way back when, in 1987, there was a man named Steve Wilhite, and he was a man trying to solve a problem. So the problem he had was he was trying to figure out a way to display an image on a computer screen without taking up too much of the computer's memory. Uh, ex please excuse my cat in the background. He's really a GIF enthusiast. He just needs to, to sit in on this. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, computers back then, right, 1987, they were, they were not what we uh, today. They were slow. Um, you know, they had a lot of limited resources. And so we needed to develop an algorithm to be able to display those images. Uh, he worked for a company called CompuServe, um, and his solution was something called GIF-87A, uh, standing for Graphics Interchange Format. Um, and so what it did was an algorithm that compressed the image and had limiting parameters, so it limited the 256 colors. It had a lot of uh, other limitations in order to make the file size small enough to display on computer screen. Uh, also, as a, um, as like a space-saving method, you could embed an entire photo slideshow. So if you were going to share more than one photo with someone, instead of sharing, um, you know, multiple photo files, you would share one large photo slideshow, kind of like a PowerPoint or something like that. Um, and it was only ever intended to be like a photo gallery. But, um, you know, based, uh, you know, it became in 1989, they put out like a, a feature where you could auto advance from one slide to the next. And uh, that kind of allowed these first animated GIFs, uh, people started pretty much immediately using, um, using it for, you know, frame-by-frame uh, -frame animation. This really kind of um, got exciting uh, when these three people developed the lempel ziv welch algorithm, uh, which is a mouthful, uh, but it, it allowed repeated patterns and simplified it for animation. And internet speeds used to be so slow that it was effectively impossible to relay a movie over any sort of distance. Um, you know, if you wanted to send them a movie, you'd like mail them a tape. So um, for the first time, a moving image could be relayed over the internet. It was kind of a big deal. 
Uh, so that was kind of exciting, um, and GIFs kind of became the format that we know it. Artistically, they became, uh, they were similar to a zoetrope or a flipbook, uh, which contains a limited number of frames, and, um, you know, people kind of looked at them artistically in a similar way. Uh, and it was, um, you know, just a kind of the image format for the early internet. So the first image on the internet ever was these lovely ladies uh, at CERN, um, and that was a GIF file. So all, all still images, all animated images, they were all GIFs. It was just kind of like what the file format for, you know, the internet was. So um, they remused the medium artistically and for tech demonstrations, this is a popular early GIF, the Dancing Baby. Uh, it was a really big deal when it came out, it was all over the news. Um, I was, <laughs> I remember it. I was young, but I remember it. Uh, but also, um, it became a bit of a folk art uh, for the early internet age. There's a lot of clip art. The under construction GIF is a very popular one. Um, but there are a lot of like, you know, really simple animated clip art things that were really popular in the early internet. And so GIF was going great. Um, it was, you know, a big important format. It kind of had taken over the internet um, and it was, everything was going well. But then, but, but a twist, there's a twist. Uh, 1995 starts the GIF Dark Ages. There is a company called Unisys and uh, they own the patent for the Lempol Ziv Walsh algorithm. Uh, previously, you know, we could just use a GIF um, and no one was really enforcing the patent, but Unisys decided they were going to start charging a small fee. Um, and while the fee wasn't very large, a lot of the early internet people were kind of libertarian in philosophy, a lot of the early developers and website builders, and they took it pretty hard uh, and got pretty angry about it. And um, there was a lot of public sentiment turned against, um, turned against uh, the GIF format as a whole. Um, so there are a lot of other formats people started to develop, developers kind of did what they did best and kind of jumped into it. Uh, most notably, people started to develop the ping and GIF files. Uh, PNG it originally said for uh, ping is not GIF was what the acronym um, was there. And so they were developing other formats to compete with GIF so that you didn't have to pay the GIF licensing fees. This kind of culminated on November 5th, 1999 uh, with an organized online protest called Burn All GIF Day. Um, and at the time, The Atlantic referred to it as the first time in human history that anyone has ever thought it worthwhile to stage an organized political protest over a mathematical algorithm. Here is a picture of people who are actually marching in the streets and they're mad about it. And I want to just take everyone's, uh, like direct everyone's attention to this read our lips, no gift taxes sign, which is such a perfect encapsulation of the mid nineties with that George H.W. Bush uh, reference that he's holding up there. Um, I just really, really appreciate what he's, what he's doing there. Anyways, uh, by this time other formats had emerged and did better for static images and GIF. Uh, PNG and JPEG were really popular. So it was kind of phased out. It hung around for animation um, until Flash became fairly dominant. And then at that time, uh, GIF had become a kind of a dead format and was really something that was kind of a footnote in the early internet history. However, we would not be here today if uh, that was the end of the story. So uh, in modern times, GIFs have had a bit of a resurgence. So as societies move more online, uh, more of our interactions with others are taking place at a distance and smartphones have limited connections. Uh, they've experienced a modern resurgence. So some of the things that made GIF initially popular um, was the short time, uh, short time frame that they played and also the uh, small file size. And uh, the ability to express a specific emotion um, was really valued in our current internet culture. It kind of became a stand-in for a looping soundless short animation. Uh, ironically, most GIFs you see on Twitter, Instagram, you know, uh, all social media that you're used to aren't actually .gif files, they're videos. Uh, just because video compression has progressed to a point where it is more efficient than um, the tradition, the old, the old time GIF compression. So this one right here uh, is the most popular GIF of 2019, um, and it's kind of very indicative of what GIF culture is uh, in the current age. It's a clip from popular culture uh, that becomes kind of a large scale inside joke, and it gains a context far greater than the source material from which it comes. Uh, also, uh, popular GIF formats are the reaction GIF. Uh, which is really useful to express emotion, especially, you know, when you're uh, operating in a very text-based format of like Reddit or text messages, um, something like that. Uh, also, there are a lot of, um, you know, artists that are working in the GIF space, especially in places like Cinemagraphs, which have like one part of the image that is, that is uh, you know, that is, um, that is animated and the rest is kind of still kind of making a really nice, calm, uh, ambient effect. So uh, that's where we are with GIFs today. Um, it's got a surprisingly, uh, you know, <laughs> turbulent history for a mathematical algorithm. Um, and now we're going to learn how to create some GIF files of our own. So I will turn it over uh, to the next presenter.
Hey everyone, that is me. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So my name is Sasha, and um, I'm going to talk about Photoshop frame animations today, and hopefully you guys can follow along and learn how to make some things of your own. Um, I am a digital designer, um, primarily UI designer, um, but a lot of times in my work um, as a freelancer, I have to make GIF content um, for various things, whether it's sending out an email or um, for posting on social media. And um, so I've encountered this a little bit in my job. And um, I think my favorite way personally is to do frame animations. It's um, a pretty easy, approachable way if you don't have any experience with video um, and keyframe animation to make content of your own. Um, these three are what we're going to learn today um, how to do in their three different ways of making a frame anima animation in Photoshop. Um, so if you want to follow along, um, we're going to be doing importing image sequences, frame animation from scratch, um, and importing videos to frames. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about exporting GIFs from Photoshop and the different settings that you can use for that. Um, so the first section in the files that you should have downloaded um, is called Photoshop frame animation uh, number one and we're going to go ahead and get started with um, this coffee layer sequence here. So this is the example um, of what I'm going to be creating and I'll walk you guys through exactly how I did this. So if you want to locate the folder um, in your files that you downloaded called coffee gif layers, this is what you're going to need to use. Um, this format of importing a sequences of sequence of images is really good to use for um, things like stop motion animation or any sort of um, like flip book style animation that you're using uh, that you want to do. So if you're like a hand drawn animator, um, illustrator, you want to do an animation with your hand drawn, drawn images, or if you're a photographer and you want to do a quick stop motion animation like this, um, it's a good way to do that. Um, so you actually don't start with um, a Photoshop file. You go, you start with, I'm um, going to file in Photoshop and scripts and load files into stack. Um, and from there, you'll go ahead and locate that folder I was talking about, coffee gif layers, and I've already made this um, whole sequence of images using my own coffee on my counter um, and just taking pictures with my iPhone. So it was super easy to do. You'll go ahead and click open and you'll see everything that you're importing here. If you wanna add more files to that from a different folder, um, you can go back into browse and add more files. Um, if you were um, adding files randomly and you wanted to sort them by name, um, I've made sure these are in order for you, but you can press sort by name. Um, if you didn't have your phone on a tripod or static, you could um, attempt to automatically align source images. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but it's just something that Photoshop tries to do for you um, if you have um, the same content frame by frame, it'll kind of align that for you, but we're not gonna do that today. Um, and then we do not wanna make a smart object after loading layers. So that went ahead and it's making a new file for me, putting all of those layers I selected into one Photoshop document on top of each other. Um, the only downside to this method I would say is that these aren't these layers aren't smart objects. I personally really like to use smart objects um, in Photoshop because if you crop them, make them a different size, um, it doesn't degrade the quality at all. Um, but really GIFs aren't about quality necessarily um, or the best highest quality, so it's okay for now. Um, if you did want to add layers um, as smart objects, you could just do it manually by selecting all of these layers 
dragging them into your pre-made Photoshop document and then hitting enter until they're all in there. Um, a little bit more labor intensive, but not a big deal in the long run. Um, so we're gonna stick with just the flattened files. So from here, um, you're going to want to create a frame animation. Um, so to see this timeline view that I'm seeing, that's under window and timeline. So make sure that panel is turned on so that you can create your timeline. And then you'll want to make sure down here that this um, is switched to create frame animation, not create video timeline. Um, Kendra will be covering creating video timeline next, but for now we're going to do frame animation. And you can go ahead and it gives you your first frame. Um, the frame is exactly what's showing in your layers. So um, whatever you have turned on, on here when you're on your selected frame is going to show on that frame. So if I turn off the layer, it's going to turn off the layer on that frame. Um, to get all of these layers into their own individual frames, um, we just go to this menu on the side here. And we make frames from layers. And that went ahead and added all of these individual layers to their own frame. So as I click through, you can see that it's making each layer visible on its own. Um, now, this actually imported backwards um, for whatever reason when it made its own, when it made the frames. So um, I'm just going to reverse all these frames and I do that by selecting all of them. I'm just clicking the first one, holding shift, clicking the last one. Go to that menu option again and reverse frames. All right. And I am, no, I'm going to check on the chat really quick to make sure that anyone has questions. If you guys do have questions at any time um, and I'm not noticing or you want me to slow down, you can also just send it yourself and yell at me. That's fine. Um, all right. So now we have our super basic frame animation here. Um, you can preview at any time by pressing the space bar. Um, it's going really fast. Hey, Sasha. So we're gonna wanna, yep. Um, could you repeat that last step? I think a couple of people missed it. Um, previewing? Uh, yes. Or Sorry. reversing? Just before that, yeah, I think they're reversing. Okay, so um, if you want to reverse your frames, you select them all. And you do that by clicking your first frame, holding the shift button, and clicking the last frame. So now all of them are selected. And you go to the menu on your timeline panel and select reverse frames. All right, okay, all good now. I think maybe so, we missed the step before that. Um, let's see. Hey, Julie, do, are you able to chat? Yes, hi, sorry about that. Um, in the, uh, the drop down for the create video timeline or create frame animation, is it the frame yeah. animation? Yes. Okay. And then you're, then you select, um, what's after that? So then you, in your menu of the timeline panel here, yep. um, you select create, um, it might not let me do it since I already have it done. Right. I go back. I can also, I don't know if you, if I have the capability to share my screen with you, but. Um, so it's, let's see if this works. Um, make frames from layers. Do you see that on your? Yeah, let's see. Sorry to be high maintenance. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. This is about learning. Okay.
Is it the the menu for in the timeline menu or the layers menu? In the timeline. Um, timeline. Okay. Menu. Oh, I don't yep. even have. Okay, I don't even have all of those down there. Like, uh, okay, one second. I hope everyone else is, or some others, or at least <laughs> trying to get this right too. Okay. I'm right with you. That one, the uh, the not all the uh, setups are exactly the same, and when you don't use timeline frequently, it's not always up. That's a good call out. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm right now my timeline does not have anything in it. I did select create frame animation, but then I go to the menu and I don't see there's nothing in the timeline. So there's nothing to create from that. So you're going to you want to make um, frames from layers. Do you see that option so it so it's going to take all your layers and make them into individual frames do you see that option um no it's not there huh. i have the new version i'm trying to think of like what else it could be um susie are they are is anyone also able to share their screen or is it just me as just the presenters oh um if you stop sharing julie can or i can make julie a co-host um all right julie are you able to share your screen so we can troubleshoot yeah okay we'll try it helping you out real quick um and then yes. if, if it doesn't we can always talk later and i can help you through it okay sure let me see here let's see if we can solve it quickly though okay where's the share screen here we go okay all right, so um, yep, so if you look, I'm trying to move this bar here. Okay, so I did, I selected create frame animation here. Yep. And, but there's nothing in my, uh, nothing in the window here for the timeline. Okay, so you wanna hit, actually hit that button, create frame animation. You have to start your animation first. Oh, okay. Look at that. There you go. And now you should have the menu. Make frames from layers. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. That's okay. It was super easy to solve. Yeah. All right. Sandra, did that help you too? Yes, thank you. No problem. All right, let's get back to this. It's hard um, to know how fast to go um if you know i've been doing this for however many years um and you kind of get used to all the actions but definitely keep hollering if i go too fast or you need have any questions all right um so if everyone is at the point where they have then reversed the frames um which just a reminder is selecting all of them and then back in that menu, reverse frames. Um, so the first one that you have should be the beans next to the cup and the last one should just be the blank countertop, the water marks on it. Um, and then you should be able to preview your animation from there by pressing the space bar. It's gonna go really fast because we haven't set any sort of time yet for these. Um, and to make, that timed a little bit better you can go ahead and select them all all the frames again and on underneath each of these frames is your little time indicator um, so that sets your frame delay um, you can press any of them since all of these are selected and you're going to set the same um, for each of the frames so i'm going to start at 0.5 seconds for all of them and that um, should give us a pretty good, solid um, pace of animation. Um, one thing to always note is when you're previewing an animation in Photoshop, it's probably gonna go slower than what um, you're going to see when you save the GIF out or um, put it on the internet. Um, I have a pretty good idea of how fast it actually goes, um, but if you ever want to preview your animation in real time. Um, you can save for web, which is under file, export, save for web. And this is how we're going to end up 
um, saving everything out in the end. Um, and then you can just hit the preview button at the bottom here. That'll open it up in Safari. I'm not going to do that right, right now, um, but it will show you kind of the real time. So if you need to get a better idea of how fast your animation is going, that's kind of how you render it in Photoshop. A little annoying, but um, you'll get a good idea of how fast it is and be able to just work directly from Photoshop eventually. Um, so from here, I think I want to make some of this go a little bit faster. Um, the part in the middle where it's stirring is a little bit slow for me. So I'm going to select those frames um, that have the spoon in them. And I'm just going to make those 0.2 seconds instead of 0.5 seconds. So then that goes a little bit faster in the middle um, while the coffee stirs. And then I'm also going to make this last frame last for maybe three seconds. Um, since that's not an option that I see on the list of times here, I can click other and then I can enter any number of seconds that I want. Say okay. And then um, it should go ahead and give me that quick stir and then pause on the end before it loops. Um, so mine is looping automatically forever. If yours is not, um, you can look at this option at the very bottom of your timeline panel um, where it says either once, three times, or forever. And you can select how many times you want it to loop. Um, I don't see any reason for ever doing it less than forever, but um, you may have your, your times when you only want a GIF to play once. Um, just knowing that a GIF pretty much always automatically plays when you're on a website um, or viewing it somewhere. So if, some, if you only have it playing once and someone catches it at the end and they're not going to be able to see the rest of it. So I pretty much always say forever. You can also change this, this option when you're exporting if you, if you ever need to do that. Um, and that's like the most basic animation. Um, if you need to delete frames, you can select a frame um, and just delete that. Um, that is not the same as deleting a layer. So you see when I delete that frame, um, that layer is still in here on the side. So that was this layer. And if I turn that back on, um, then that shows up again in the frame. Um, that for any of these frames, if I select the frame, change the, what's viewing in the layer panel, um, that will actually change the frame. So you wanna make sure that each of your frames has exactly what you want to see um, in your layers. Um, and if you have a image um, showing and you delete that layer, it's going to delete it in your animation. Um, so you don't want to do that unless you've also deleted your frame. Just some more little tips. Um, so now that we have this animation, I want to make it a little bit better. Um, I, I want to color correct it. Um, and I can easily do that to the whole video just by putting an adjustment layer on. Um, if you're adding a new layer, my suggestion would to always be make sure that you're on the first frame. Um, so right now I'm in the middle. And if I add a new adjustment layer, um, it's going to be hard to control which frames that's visible on. So what I always do is make sure I'm on the first frame, add my adjustment layer or new layer or anything else that you want to put in there. So I'm going to add a curves layer, do some super basic quick color balancing. No, nope, that's too blue. Let's do that. Brighten it up a little bit. Um, and now that has been applied to all of my layers. Um, if I wanted to only apply that, sorry, all of my frames, if I only wanted to apply that to one frame, um, by being on the first frame, I can turn that off. It will turn it off throughout the rest of the frames. Um, then I can go to the frame I want it on, turn it back on, and it will only show up on that frame. That's why I always start at the beginning because you have a lot more control over turning it on and, on and off um, across all of your frames. So anything that you do to the first frame is kind of going to affect the rest of it. And that's like the clunky thing about Photoshop frame animations. Um, so if I, you know, added a new layer, um, 
just a fill or something to this that would apply it to all of my frames, which is annoying. And then from there, um, I think I want to add some text on this very last frame. Um, and since I'm only adding that to the last frame, I could just add it while I'm on the last frame. But um, like I said, I always like to start from the beginning to make sure that everything's in the right place. Um, so I'm just going to say, yay, coffee. Change the color of that to some green to match the coffee cup. And then position it still while I'm on the first layer. And this can be, this can, you can add pretty much anything that you want. Um, I mean, it is still Photoshop. So again, the frames are just what's showing on your layers. So if you already know how to do a lot in Photoshop, you can just, you can do a lot with frame animations. Um, so I'm gonna turn that layer off, go to my last frame, turn that on again. And I have that only applied to the last frame now. And we're gonna go ahead and preview that. Make sure it looks good. And that's it. All right, are there any questions before I go on to the next topic? Um, go, go ahead and just speak up because I can't really see who's, if anyone's raising their hand or chatting. Hi, Sasha. Um, could you go through how you applied the text to the last frame just one more time? It was a little fast. Sure. Um, so to apply text in Photoshop, sorry, I used my key command, so you probably didn't actually see what I was doing. Um, but I went to um, type, which is done by pressing the T key on your keyboard, and that opens up your your type tool. You can also um, do that on the side here on your um, side panel, selecting the type tool, um, clicking anywhere on the screen, and it will automatically add a new type layer for you. You can type in whatever you want. Um, I committed that by pressing escape. Um, yours might be different, but um, if you just click pretty much on any other layer, you can commit the type that you that you made. Um, went back to the selection tool, um, position that in the middle. So I'm gonna position this at the bottom. Um, in case you guys didn't know this, if you ever wanna center anything or align anything into your actual artboard, you can select all, so that's Command A, and then you'll see your align tools at the top here. So you can align to the actual um, artboard. It's a little bit harder to do in Photoshop than it is in Illustrator or some other Adobe programs, but that's an easy way to do it. Um, and then I turned that off, went to my last frame, turned it back on. Any other questions? Can you just quickly go through like how you did all that? Because it took me a few minutes to actually find the files. The whole, um, the whole uh, image sequence importing? Uh, yeah. Or um, like how you did the animation, at least, and like the reverse and all that. Um, okay. We actually are recording this. If you did want to go back, um, we, you can look at the video again and follow along that way. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we'll send this out at the end. Um, so if you if you miss all of it or you want to keep practicing um, or see what I did, then that'll be an easy way to do it. Okay. Right. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close this file and get started on the next one. So next we're going to learn, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and teach how to do importing a video into frames. Um, and we're going to make something like this by importing a video. Um, so the way that you start with this, again, you don't need a new Photoshop document. Um, you're just gonna go ahead um, and file, import, video frames to layers. Um, oh, and just to note for this one, I'm, I don't have a file for you to follow along with. Um, it's 
ends up pretty much being the same as doing the image sequence because what you get out of the video is an image sequence. Um, so you can just kind of watch this um, and then later practice with your own videos. So um, you'll do import video frames to layers. And then I have a file of a video of a sparkler that I took. This was actually a boomerang from last 4th of July. And you'll get this dialog box. Um, so from here, you can do a lot of things, but it's not, it's a little bit clunky again, um, as are all animation tools in Photoshop. Photoshop isn't necessarily made from scratch to do animation. It's just an extra bonus feature if you don't want to learn After Effects. Um, so you can adjust the range of video that you want to import. If you are importing like a clip from a really large movie, um, this kind of um, this way to make a frame animation works really well if you want to make um, like a meme or a reaction GIF, like your your basic internet GIFs that you see a lot. If you want to take a clip from your favorite TV show um, and make a GIF out of that, this is a really great way to do that. Um, or if your cat did something funny and you want to make a GIF out of that, um, works really well for that too. So if you have a really long video and you want to clip it, you can do that roughly from here. Your controls are kind of clunky, so you're not going to get it perfect, but that's okay because you can perfect it once you actually get into your frames that you're seeing. Um, so I'm going to say maybe right around there. Looks good enough. Um, and that automatically said selected range only for me. If you have a normal video, like um, one that you took off your frame, off your phone, or one that you have um, taken from a TV show or a movie, you're probably going to want to limit to every number of frames. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, most videos are like 24 to 30 frames per second. I think um, your GIF does not need to be that high a quality, especially if you're just making it for fun. Um, and really the idea of GIFs is to make kind of a smaller file size out of your video. Um, so you're not gonna need all the frames in there. Um, so if I'm taking footage from a normal video, I'm probably gonna do limit to every three frames at least, um, maybe even more of that if I don't mind it being a little bit choppier. What this will do is just make your, your GIF a little choppier and people are used to seeing that in GIFs, it's kind of expected. Um, so that's gonna be okay. This is a boomerang though and that automatically is less frames when you use that app. Um, so I actually don't need to limit to every number of frames. And then you also just wanna make sure that make frame animation is checked. Um, if anyone wants to take a screenshot of these selections right now, feel free um, for a later reference. But this is your basic dialog box for importing videos. So I'm going to go ahead and import that video. And I can just go ahead and play the video right there. It already made my frame animation for me. Everything's already set up and viewing the correct way. Um, and then you can just control it from there. So um, I want to go ahead and crop this to a square just because I want my final file to be a square. Um, again, these are flattened images. They are not smart objects in your layers to the side here. So if you do crop it um, to a smaller pixel size, so if I was using this crop tool and cropping um, to a number of pixel size, sizes, um, that would just go ahead and crop those images completely um, and make your final file smaller. Um, so I want to keep it as big as possible because when I'm exporting, I can make that any, um, any size I want in the export. So I'm just going to use the ratio here, make it a square, and make sure that delete cropped pixels um, check mark is not checked. Um, and so now it's a square. That was really easy. It crops my video for me. Um, if I want to go in here and better finesse where my video um, is stopping and starting, um, since Boomerang's loop, um, it's 
I don't need all of the frames that it had. Um, I think it loops at like frame 35. So from frame 36 on, I'm just gonna delete those frames. I can also delete those frames in the layers um, section here since I'm not using them um, just to make my Photoshop file a little bit smaller. Always thinking about hard drive space. Um, and my GIF is automatically looping, so it still has that nice boomerang effect that I started with. Um, again, you can add adjustment layers if you want from here. Remembering to always start with the first frame. Um, I don't know, let's do a warming filter or something. This is a warming filter. That looks nice. Um, I have already made some artwork in Illustrator to use, so I'm just gonna Command C, copy that. Go back to Photoshop, Command V, paste it. Paste is a smart object. I love smart objects. Um, and then I will make that white. So you can see it, and that has been applied. And then this could be a really basic 4th of July Instagram post if you wanted it to be. Of course, if you're using GIFs for Instagram, you don't actually save them out as GIFs, you save them out as MP4s. Um, mostly we're gonna be talking about making the GIF file format today, but if you did want to export your videos as an MP4, um, that's just done by file, export, and uh, render video at the bottom here. Um, I won't talk too much about these settings, so I honestly don't know a lot about what they mean, but um, you can play around with them a little bit. Start with your basic um, settings and export your MP4 that way. Um, if you have any questions about video settings, Elliot, who will be talking about After Effects at the end, is the one to ask. All right, and that's it for importing video sequences. So does anyone have any questions? I'm going to look at the chat here. Um, I took out of Illustrator um, just the artwork that I had made. So I made this, um, this Happy Fourth of July frame um, in Illustrator earlier, just using type and shape tools. Um, and just wanted to make that my frame. I find, I find it easier to make things in Illustrator that include any sort of vector shapes or um, type. And so what I'll usually do instead of making type directly in Photoshop, unless I really need to, or making shapes directly in Photoshop is make them in Illustrator first and then put them into Photoshop as a smart object. All right, any other questions? Um, Jessica, your question about should you always keep the layers off, was that in reference to this? Do you want to clarify what your question was? Oh, the, it was, um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, it was, it was the, um, Photoshop file that you had before, um, where it was the coffee thing, um, I'm like a beginner at making gifts, so I noticed, like, that I've had like all of the layers like I the balls turned on and then I end up confusing myself because I go through different frames and then like the layers change so I get like I get myself lost so I wasn't sure if like it seems like it's easier for you to have like the first layer on yeah if I'm using solid images like this like if so these layers are solid they don't have any transparencies in them um, so you can, you can only have, you can have like only the layer that you want to see on and you can have all the other layers off. And that does definitely help me keep track of what layer is on and what layers off. Um, the next tutorial I'm going to do is about making, um, frame animations from scratch using shapes inside of Photoshop. And so that might help you see the process for if you have transparent layers and keeping those on and off. But, um, Yes, does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. No problem. Any other questions? 
All right. So the last thing I'm going to make is this my magic ball bouncing GIF. And this is just using things that you can make inside of Photoshop. Um, I have the files in the in your reference files um, already all made um, if that helps you in the future to reference it. But my recommendation for now is just to start from scratch. Um, so just start with a blank Photoshop document. Go ahead and file new document or command N. And I'm going to make this document 1080 by 1080 pixels because that's what's recommended for Instagram if you want to square. I can also always, um, I'm going to keep everything vector and um, smart objects in my layers so I can use, I can change that later if I want to. All right, and make sure that your color mode is set to RGB. Um, you can just have a white background, I'm probably going to delete it anyway. Color profile, sRGB, sRGB is always for the web. Um, and go ahead and create your document. All right, so um, I think I want my background to be black like I have in my demo file here, but you can make it any color you want. So my favorite way to make a background is your um, new layers and make a solid color adjustment layer um, because you can make that whatever color you want and then you can change it later. So actually maybe I'll do something purple. I always like purple. Okay. Um, you can also just keep the white background if you want. No big deal. Uh, and then I'm going to make my shape. I'm going to use a circle like I have in my example. You can use whatever shape you want. Um, or if you have a vector file of like a, something from Illustrator or something that you've made before that's just a simple object, you can use that. Um, circles are just really easy. I'm going to make this pink. And then center that by selecting all, hitting my align to center. And I'm going to place that a little bit beyond the top of the screen. That's my starting point. So um, I'll just give you one second to make your shape, make your background, um, put your shape in its starting position. So think about what animation you want to make. You're welcome to just make um, the bouncing ball like I have made here. Um, or if you want it moving side to side, you can make your starting shape um, on the sides of your artboard. If you want it moving corner to corner, you can put it in the corner of your artboard. Um, wherever you want your shape to start, put your shape there. All right, hopefully you guys all have your shapes made by now. And now you're going to make sure that timeline is um, in view again by window timeline. You probably have it turned on from the first tutorial still and select create frame animation and click that button to make your first frame. And that first frame is just gonna show whatever you have visible here um, in your layers panel. All right. So when you're making something from scratch, um, you can do it by hand as much as you want. I could make a new frame by hitting this button down here, um, the plus sign for a new frame, and I can drag my ball a little bit. Make a new frame, drag my ball a little bit more, and keep doing that in whatever motion I wanted to. Maybe I wanted to go to the side a little bit. There's a gust of wind, your frame. Um, this is very tedious but you have incredible control over where your object goes if you do it this way. Um, this is all things you can do in After Effects. It's just like the easy hand done way of doing it um, or in, a, in timeline animation in Photoshop, you can also do. I'm gonna delete those frames because I have an easier way of doing super linear uh, motion like this. 
So I have my starting position. I'm going to make a new frame and I'm going to put in my end position. So I want the ball to go all the way to the bottom of the screen. So I have my starting point and my ending point. This is my super basic animation. Um, it's very jumpy, but you can, you can already tell what's going on. The ball is bouncing. Um, now to make it smoother, um, Photoshop has a really nice tool um, called Tween. And you can use that by selecting your starting point, your starting frame, your ending frame. And there are two ways. You can either um, hit this icon in the bottom of your timeline panel. That looks like a motion blur. And that opens up your tween panel. Or you can go to your photo, your timeline panel menu, and you can select tween from there. It'll open up the same dialog box. Um, just make sure your starting frame and your ending frame are selected to do this. And there are some options here. So tween with, um, if you don't have something selected, it will allow you to select previous frame or next frame. Um, since I only have two frames, I could just start with selecting one, hitting tween and saying tween with next frame. You can say tween with last frame. Um, feel free in the future to play around with those, see what happens. You can select how many frames you want to add. So depending on how smooth you want your motion to be, um, this is what, it, what this is doing is actually adding frames for you automatically. So Photoshop is gonna sense where your starting um, frame is and where your ending frame is, and it's going to add all of the motion in between um, for you in frames. So um, I want this to be kind of smooth, so I'm gonna say 10 frames. I think that's an appropriate amount of frames to make um, to, for the ball to go from here to here. If it were a longer distance, maybe I would wanna add more. If I wanted it to happen quicker, maybe I would add less. Um, feel free to play around with that in the future and see what works for your animation. And then I'm going to select all layers. Um, that just means it's going to pay attention to every, all the layers um, on your screen. If I said only selected layers, then it would only pay attention to the layer that was selected. But I want that background to continue um, on all the new frames I'm making. So I'm going to keep all layers selected. I can show you what happens when. So if I say selected layers and I go ahead and say OK, it made my new frames, but it didn't include the background in there. So I'm going to do that again and say all layers. Um, parameters, so if you have any sort of um, effects or opacity going on with your object, you can pay attention to that too. Um, I only have position changing, so um, that's all that matters, but I'm gonna leave this selected anyway. And then you say okay, and that gives you your animation. Very easy. Um, so I'm going to undo this. I am going to make the ball change colors as it goes to the bottom, like I have in my example here. So see how it gets lighter as it goes up and down. Um, so the way that I did that was um, at the beginning, my ball's pink. And at the, on the last frame, I'm going to add an um, effect of color overlay to my shape. Actually, breaking my own rule, I'm going to do that on the first frame. Remember what I said earlier about um, always making adjustments on your first frame. It just simplifies things. Um, that way you don't lose layers later since Photoshop's um, is a little bit clunky with the animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do color overlay and I'm going to have it change to just like a different shade of pink at the bottom. Um, and for this first frame, I'm going to turn that effect off, go select my last frame, turn that effect back on. So that um, changes from frame to frame. Select those again and hit tween. Now I definitely want to make sure my effects check mark, check mark is checked because I changed an effect and it will slowly change my gradient. Actually, it didn't do that. Um, this happens sometimes where you just have to kind of figure out what went wrong. 
I think I'm going to try and delete um, the effect off of my first layer and only add it to my last frame. So bear with me here. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this effect layer off of both frames. All right. And now I'm going to only add that effect layer on the last frame. All right, so it's not showing up on the first frame. Let me see if this works a little bit better. All right, that works. Now it slowly is gradient changing. Um, any questions right now? I know we've gone over a lot so far. Okay, um, so I have my basic motion that I want happening here, um, but I want the ball to bounce like I have in my example, and I can very easily just reverse that animation by selecting all of these frames that I've just made, um, and then holding Option and dragging to the end until I see this blue bar to add the frames. So sometimes you have to select uh, drag from from a certain spot to get the that right. I think I did that twice. Let me repeat that since I was a little bit messy doing that. So what I'm doing is selecting all the frames, holding the option key while I click the first frame and drag it all the way to the end. And I've just copied those frames. And then I'm going to use my reverse frames that we talked about earlier. So make sure that only those last, let's see, 12 frames are selected. Reverse the motion, reverse frames. And now it has my bouncing effect that I want. Okay. That is very basic from here. It's just like adding things to make your animation a little bit better and paying attention to what is visible um, in what frames. So in the middle here, I have um, a little bit of a, of a pause when the ball hits the ground since I duplicated that frame. Um, I'm gonna keep that um, if you, to, so that I can add like a little squish effect in the middle, but if you just want it to stay static when it hits the ground, you can probably just delete that duplicate frame. Um, from here, uh, so to add the squish, this is where um, Photoshop frame animation gets really tricky because um, if I want to add a squish effect using this shape that I've already created and I say Command T to transform the shape and squish it, um, it's gonna squish it the whole way. Uh, I don't want that. To, so I'm actually just going to add a new layer. So I'm going to go back to my first frame. I'm going to duplicate. Um, actually, here, I'll show you what happens when you do the frame from the middle. So I'm going to go to my middle frame and add a new shape um, right in the middle where I want it. So I'm going to duplicate this ellipse. Um, and that added it to all of the frames that I have. Um, I'm going to go back to my first frame so I can make that invisible across the board. Then go back to the frame that, where I want to add it in again. So that's number 12 for me. Add a new frame, turn off my old ellipse, and add my new ellipse. So I'll label this one squish so that I know what it is on my layer panels. And now I can transform that shape and it will only transform that shape. So this is my, my ball squishing when it hits the ground and bounces. And we can preview that animation that we just made. So that's starting to look a little bit more natural. Um, again, all of this is just playing around to see what makes your animation look more natural or more like what you want it to. Um, in my example, I also added some glow to the ball um, at the end because I had it flashing. Um, I added a little bit of a gradient um, at the bottom that slowly becomes more opaque. 
um, and more when it as it as it uh, plays. And I did that all manually. So since I'd already created all of these frames, um, what I did is added a new. Um, you don't have to follow along for all of this since we're a little bit short on time, and I'm probably going to move move a little bit faster. But um, I just added with my brush like a very um, fuzzy little shadow at the bottom here. Make that black. And squished that so that it was a little bit more shadowy looking. Um, set the opacity to zero on this first frame. And then just manually as I went through, set the opacity to 10 and then so on as I went. Um, an easy way to change opacity with your keys, if you don't know this, um, is just by hitting the number on your keyboard of what opacity you want. So um, on this third frame, I'm going to make it 20%. And I just did that by hitting the number two. On this fourth frame, I wanted 30%. So hit number three, just very tediously go in and add, change the uh, opacity on each of these layers. And we have it at 100% when it reaches the bottom. And then go backwards and add, change that opacity one by one on each frames. So it gives me a lot of control, um, is annoying to use to go through and do all of this. Um, but it's just kind of like hand drawn animation, kind of just do one thing at a time. So now I've got my little shadow happening. Oh, and I missed a frame somewhere in there. There we go. All right, let's see how this looks. Um, all right, and that's that's pretty much what I had. I think I had a flash happening in the middle, um, which I just did by selecting that middle frame um, and then just adding a new um, color fill. Solid color, let's make it white. That looks weird. Let's make it brighter purple. And then that added it to all of my frames, of course. So I'm going to turn that off on the first frame, turn it on again in the middle frame. Now we have it. If you want to add any sort of um, changing the, uh, oh, one thing, I, one thing I forgot to do actually was setting the um, delay, frame delay for all of these frames. Um, so like I did in the first, um, example of importing image sequences, just select all of these and um, probably 0.1 seconds is going to be okay. Um, let's see what I had on my example. Oh, I had 0 0.05. So wanted to, if you want it to happen a little bit faster, um, just think about how many seconds um, is in is each of your frame has. Um, you can do some math and calculate exactly what frame rate you want, um, or you can just kind of guess and play around with it. So it doesn't really change my Photoshop preview, but it will change how it looks. If I had left all of those at zero, it would have just like gone by in a flash once I actually exported that. All right, real quick, I'm gonna talk about um, quick GIF exporting. So um, now that I have, oh, sorry, does anybody have any questions about, about what's going on here? Anything I've done? Okay, feel free to ask me later too. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that save for web dialog box to save my GIF. Um, that's under file, export, save for web, or as I always like to do the key command, which is command option shift S. So it's a little bit of a finger twister there, but they're all close together. And this opens up my my save for web dialog box. Um, so you're going to have a bunch of options. You yours might not be started on GIF yet. Um, a good preset to start with is GIF 128 dithered. And I can talk a little bit about what all that means. So if you want to just start with that preset, um, that'll give you a pretty good place um, to start from. So 
right here is where you're going to select GIF. Um, you can also save as a JPEG, PNG, or whatever a WBMP is um, from this dialog box as well. So we want GIF. This um, drop down is how you want your colors to adapt. So um, as I think Elliot talked about earlier in his history of, of GIFs, um, they GIFs limit your colors that you can use. So the maximum colors you can use in a GIF is 200. And 56 and that is not a lot of colors especially if you're working from a video where there is just like thousands of colors used um, in this animation that I have made um, the colors are re are not very many since I since I was using vector objects but um, for example um, I'm gonna cancel out of this and go back to my sparkler so, just so you can see this was a video um, and so there's a lot of different colors happening in here. And if I preview that, this is not, you can tell it's like not as high quality as the video that came off of my phone. There's not as much color depth. Um, and this drop down is just helping you kind of find what works best. This is just something you're going to have to play with when you, um, when you're doing your video or you're saving out your GIF is just seeing what happens um, if you have a really high quality video that you're working from sometimes you're going to get some um, weird things happening a lot of times i'll get like a weird pink hue over everything um, and i just have to kind of play with this restrictive is going to give you usually the best colors but it's going to make your um, video look a little bit jagged um, as far as its pixels go um, and that's just, it's just taking all the only, only the necessary colors there. Um, so selective usually works for me. Um, you can also play with the number of colors. So I'm going to go back to my bouncing ball. Command option shift S. Um, and this does not need a, not a lot of colors. So in order to kind of keep my file size low, which you can see in the preview down here, um, I'm going to just say like 32 colors. And it really didn't change much. Um, the only thing you'll notice is the banding um, on the gradient at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm getting some banding since um, the most number of colors is happening in that transition from black to purple. If I want that to go away, maybe I can raise a little bit. It's really not affecting my file size a lot when I change this, I can see down here. So I might as well just go with more colors. I'll do 128, it's a pretty good um, place. So you can also play with your dither um, and that's kind of, that means just like how colors are transitioning. Since we're working with limited colors, um, Photoshop will do, will, um, help you help it look a little bit better um, with dither that's kind of smoothing out maybe where you have a gradient um, so if I set my dither to zero that's going to make my file size smaller usually um, in, in bigger files but you can see at the bottom the banding is like really heavy when it hits the bottom there so I'm going to go hit that back to 100% since again on this file doesn't affect a lot um, you can also if your file is getting too big play with the lossy slider down here um, that makes it more just pixelated and um, lower quality, but it will decrease your file size a lot. So some weird stuff is happening there, but my file size maybe goes down a little bit. Um, again, these are all things that you can play with more when you are working from a uh, video rather than um, a simple shape animation. So I'm gonna keep my lossy at zero so I have it more high quality there. Um, and here's down here is where you can change the size when you're exporting. You can change the number of time it, times it loops, change that to once if you had it set forever or forever if you only had it set to once. And you can do the preview in Safari. So let's see if I can show you that. There we go. So that previews it at full size in Safari and full um, like accurate motion timing and that'll be my final gif if i put this gif on my website or anything um, that's going to be exactly what it looks like because it's loading it um, i remember making like 
when internet speed was was a little bit harder to um, get high quality, uh, being being able to preview GIFs and them being really slow, and it would kind of show you like a good preview of what it what it looked like um, when you had a really slow internet. Um, but luckily, most of us have pretty fast internet now and aren't going to have trouble loading such a small file size. All right. So then from there, you can just hit save. I think I covered most of these. Um, we don't have any transparency, so I didn't have to worry about that. But if I did want to make this transparent just by do, uh, removing the background there and then resaving, I could play around with the transparent. I think um, Kendra will probably talk a little bit more about this in her section. Um, but you can also work with uh, the dither kind of diffusion and uh, ways that transparency is working. Um, but GIFs can have a transparent background, which is pretty cool. All right, and we'll say save. And you can save that wherever you want, your final animation. Um, there's not really any settings that you need to worry about. Um, and you're all done. All right. So that is it for what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Kendra now um, to talk about timeline animation. Does anyone have any, any questions? WBMP is a wireless application protocol bitmap format. Thank you. All righty. Well, if there are any questions, I am going to start talking a little bit about how to do the timeline animation or the, um, let me share my screen. All righty. So another name for the timeline animation would be keyframe animation and the things that you can do with it in Photoshop are a good place to start. And then once you learn those, then you can kind of jump over into After Effects, which is what Elliot's gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, sorry, I didn't even introduce myself. Um, I'm Kendra. I am one of the co-VPs for social um, for CSCA. And then for my day job, I also work a lot in social too. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be covering is how to use your gifts to um, make, go. Yeah, so you can make um, Giphy stickers or Instagram stickers, and then you can also add reactions in Slack. So I'm going to show you guys kind of quickly how to do that. Um, so here's an example of what you can do in timeline animation. I'm going to go over this. So just really simple, uh, changing the color, changing the position. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to do this fun little liquify effect. So if you've ever wondered how to make your animations or your gifts look like kind of like that hand-drawn feeling. You can do that with frames um, that Sasha just taught, and I'll go over that as well. So if you guys want to get started, you can download these Photoshop files if you want and open them, and I can give you guys a second to do that. Um, but mainly what you're going to want to have to follow along is this Illustrator file. So I already built it. Um, it's just a little simple sun with some circle and some triangles. So if you guys have that, just click on it, make sure everything is selected, and then just Command C to copy it. And then I am just gonna make a new file in Photoshop to show you guys how to use the settings. So File, New, and I'm gonna set this up so that these are what Giphy's looking for when you upload to make your Instagram stickers. So you're gonna want it to be 500 by 500 pixels. Um, and that's their requirement from Giphy. So if you're making it for something else, you can make it whatever size you want. I'm just gonna call it sun. Uh, resolution 72, make sure color is set to RGB. And then you should be good, hit create. And then I'm just gonna Command V, paste in that little sun graphic as a smart object, and then just hit return to place it. 
And then one of the requirements for making a Giphy sticker specifically is to have a transparent background. So that's the difference when you upload to Giphy. There's two options. You can either just have a regular GIF or you can have a sticker. And the stickers are the ones with the transparent background. So I am just gonna go in and delete this background layer. So you can see these little squares here show that it's transparent. And then down in this little menu before, so how we did create frame animation, you're gonna hit this little down arrow and then change it to create video timeline and then hit that button. So now you see that you have a little timeline here. And if you guys are kind of new to this, this will be, if you have multiple layers, they'll start stacking up. But right now we just have one layer. So um, I'll just show how this works. If I want to create a new layer, just say I'm going to do square, then the square, you can see that your layers over here correspond to what's over here in the timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, so if you guys have never used the timeline before, it can be a little daunting, um, but the one in Photoshop is pretty simple. So there's just three different things you can change. You can change the position of your graphic, you can change the opacity, and you can change the style. Um, and the style is any of these, uh, like the color or um, any of like the color settings that you have. So let's, we can do, I'll just do a quick little, show you let's see where is it okay so these are ones where i've done just the one so i will turn on just the opacity and if you go down drop down so you can see that i just changed the opacity here um, and then i'll go through and talk about how to do this so you can also change the color different colors or you can change the position. So if you go into your new file, let's do position. So you wanna turn this effect on, you're gonna hit this little stopwatch and you see that that adds this little keyframe right here. So that's gonna show you, as you go along, this along the top shows you what time. So this is at the beginning. So you're going to put that keyframe and then let's move it. I'm going to hold shift and then just move the little sun over to the left. And then let's say we want it to take one second to get across. So we're going to hold shift again and move it over and you can see it created another little keyframe there. So as you use this little slider, it kind of does like what the tweening did in the frame animation but this one is ju you're just doing it automatically. So you can see that's pretty fast um, and the keyframes are pretty easy to move over. So let me just say I wanted to take two seconds instead. And then I'm, oh, I'm playing this by hitting the space bar. I guess I didn't say that before. So I'm just previewing it by hitting the space bar. You can see the little sun's going across. Um, all right, let's say we want to change the color as well. So we're going to turn on the stopwatch for style. And we'll keep that color the same, but then when it gets to the end, let's say we want it to be something different. So we're going to go to effects, color overlay, and then can click in here and kind of decide whatever you want. So yeah, let's say we wanted to change to like a nice yellow color. Hit OK. And so you see that added another keyframe there. So as you slide over, it goes from this orange to the yellow. And then if we want, so say we want it to go from orange to yellow to back to orange again, you can just take this keyframe, keyframe, slide them over, and then if you go over to this first keyframe, since we already have orange there, if you right click, you can copy that keyframe, right click again, oops, just kidding. Sorry, yeah, this is, so in After Effects, if you hit copy and paste, it will paste the keyframe. And here you actually have to do it manually. So you right click, copy, and then you add another keyframe here. 
and then right click and paste. So it takes a little more time, but you can see now it's gonna switch it back to orange again. So you're changing the color and the position. And then you can also do that with opacity too. I'm not gonna show that right now just cause it's the same as the color. Um, so then if you want to export this, you go up to, or does anybody have any questions so far on that? Good. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to go up to file and this is pretty similar to what Sasha showed earlier. Export. Hey Kendra. Yeah. Um, Lila was asking, how do you change the speed? Oh, okay. That is a really good question. So if you want it to slow down, since this up here is showing you the time, so this is one second, two seconds, then it's also showing you how many frames. You can just slide this over and it'll take longer. So now it's going to be for three seconds instead. So let me preview that. I'll just move this guy kind of over in the middle. Yeah, so now he's a little bit shorter. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, I do think that's, so that's, that's kind of what you have to do is like figure it out as you go each time. It'll be a little different. Cool. Alrighty. So go file, export, save for web. And then these settings are pretty similar to what we showed earlier. So you're going to want to say GIF. Um, again, you can play around with these settings. The biggest thing that you want to change for if you're exporting this as a Giphy sticker specifically, you want to change matte to none. And then if you see here, we don't have that many colors, so we can definitely bring that down a ton and that'll make your file size smaller, um, which is good for stickers too, because if, especially if people are trying to use them on your phone, you want them to load as quickly as possible. Uh, make sure that this is still 500 looping forever, and then we can play it just to see. So yeah, the colors didn't really, didn't really change the look of it at all. And then you just hit save, and then save it as your GIF. Alrighty. Um, there's no more questions on that. I'm gonna go over the little fun trick to use the liquify tool. So I'm gonna go set up the file the same way. Uh, 500, 500. I have these automatically in here, so that's why I have to change them manually every time. So one, two. Okay. And then it should still be open in Illustrator, so copy, Command C, and then in Photoshop, Command V to paste your graphic. And then again, turning off your background. And then, so this time I'm gonna go back and do it, because this is just a little trick with the frame animation, so I'm gonna choose frame animation from this drop down, And then create frame animation. So you can see over here in your layers, you have, I'll just call this, sun one. And then if you want to make a copy of that same layer, one second. You met this. Okay. You can drag this down to this little box with the plus sign and then it'll copy that layer. And then you can double click and rename it sun two. So right now they're the same, but let's turn the first, the top one off and then just make sure the bottom one's selected. Go up to filter and then liquify. Uh, you can just hit okay with this. And so this, there's a lot of options with liquify. I'm not gonna play around with all of them right now. Um, but whatever is selected is fine. Uh, if you hit the little brackets on your keyboard, that'll change the size of your brush. And then I'm gonna go in here and just really subtly, just making it kind of look like it was hand drawn or like cut by paper. I'm gonna kind of drag this around just a little bit. So you wanna make it subtle. You can definitely make it more uh, jarring too if you want. And then hit okay. 
So you can see now your sun has that little sun, little hand drawn effect and that'll show up down here with your smart filters. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the top one. Turn the little eye on and then filter, liquefy, okay. And then I'm gonna do this in a little, I mean, it's not gonna be the same because you did do it by hand, but um, just make sure that the way that you're stretching it is just a little bit different than the other one. Hit okay. And then you can see just by clicking these over here on the eyes, you can kind of preview what your, um, your animation is gonna be. So let's make sure that the bottom one is turned back on and we're gonna go over in our timeline and then create a new frame, turn the bottom one off and then turn the top one on. And then if you shift click on both of them, we can change the speed like we did earlier. And then if you hit the space bar, you can preview how it looks. So it kind of has this hand-drawn effect. I'm going to make it faster, 0.2. Yeah, so you can kind of see it has this little like jiggly hand-drawn look. And then you can go through and export it the same way. Um, I'm not going to go through that again now just because we're kind of short on time, but I am going to go through just a few ways you can use your GIFs. So um, if you guys want to upload them to Giphy, there's like just a few things that you need to know. So the first one is you're going to have to actually create an account and there's two different ways you can create an account. So there's one as a business and there's one as an artist. You're gonna, definitely going to want to create an artist account because if as a business you have to be verified and there's this whole process to go through. So if you're not a huge company, definitely creating them as an artist is better. So that you, if you want to make stickers in uh, that will show up in Instagram that are actually searchable, you're going to have to add them to Giphy first, and then they will come up when you search them in Instagram. So that's how you make them searchable. Um, and I know you guys have probably done this before. This is just some quick screenshots of how to go through. So say you have your picture in your Instagram story, you swipe up, and then you click this little GIF search, and then you type in whatever you want in your search bar and then it'll bring it up here. So when you're adding your stickers to Giphy, they'll have you add some like hashtags and that's what the what will come up when they search. And then Sasha just showed us this yesterday. I didn't even know you could do this. So if you don't wanna go through that whole process of uploading them to Giphy, which does take, take some time and they have to approve them all. So if you want something right away, like say you create it and you wanna use it on your story, like a few minutes after. If you have your GIF saved to your photos on your phone, you can um, go down to on your phone to where it says copy photo. And then, okay, so here's the thing you have to you have to have if you have Instagram open, make sure the photo is ready in Instagram first, then go to your photo and copy it. And then when you go back to your Instagram story, it'll bring this little window up in the corner and you can click add sticker and then it'll just add it in. So that's a, a quicker way to do it if you don't, if you just wanna use your own stickers. And you can also do that with any GIF you find online. So even if you wanna add like a reaction GIF that you just Google, you can just do the same thing. If you copy the photo, it'll come up as this little, uh, little window here and then you can add it to your story. And then one more way, fun way you can use your GIFs. Um, this is for, in, if you use Slack at work, um, or just as another way to communicate with people, how you can usually add these little emojis. You can just click on the, there's a little smiley face emoji with a plus sign. So you hit add reaction. Um, and then instead of searching for whatever you want or picking one of these emojis, you can go down and click add emoji. And then it, it, there's a, an option to upload your own image. So that's where you can just upload your own GIF. Um, and then just hit save. And then the next time you go through and search, it should be there with whatever you named it. All righty, do you guys have any more questions? If not, I can stop sharing and I will turn it over to our next presenter.
All right, that is exciting. That is me. Um, okay, so we are going to talk a little bit about After Effects. And hold on, oh no, After Effects is <laughs> just crashed on me. Okay, this is the thing After Effects does. That's normal. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's After Effects. Here's the, here's not After Effects. This was all this was all pulled up just a second ago. Here's After Effects. Okay, so. We open up After Effects. I know it can be a little bit intimidating for some people, but that's okay. Um, we are going to go through it nice and slow, and if you guys have questions, we can ask that as well. So here's kind of our basic After Effects um, setup here, uh, that when you open After Effects for the first time, you'll see something similar to this. And there are a lot of buttons and a lot of panels and a lot of like things to click. Um, so it's like, you know, don't panic. It's, it's, it's all gonna be okay. Um, so just kind of a basic preview, like here's our timeline. It's very similar to what uh, we were just doing in Photoshop. Uh, with our timeline, here's kind of our project panel. It is where the assets we have for our project live. So um, it's similar to like, like the links panel you would have in InDesign if you're familiar with using InDesign. And we'll see all this in action uh, in a second. Here's your, your composition panel where you'll actually see uh, you know, what you're working on. So there are a lot of great tools to create things within After Effects. Um, but you know, we also have a lot of tools uh, otherwise that we, we can use to create things. Um, and so I didn't usually create things in Photoshop and Illustrator. That's how most people do it. Since uh, tools in Photoshop or Illustrator are so robust for creating graphics, um, it can be really nice and useful. To just create things that way and then bring them into After Effects. And since they're you know, all Adobe programs, they work pretty well together. Um, one exception being InDesign. InDesign does not work very well with After Effects um, for uh, unknown reasons. So, uh, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator, you know, you can import the After Effects, no problem. In design, you'll have a little bit more issues. So if we go to our references folder right here, um, we have our After Effects uh, file, and then I just have this simple Illustrator file um, that I prepared for this lesson. So if we double click on that, we can open it up, and I'll just hit Command Zero. So, uh, you know, nothing uh, too groundbreaking right here. We have our text. I outlined it, you don't have to. Um, and we also have like this little star, um, you know, this is not an artistic masterpiece by, my, by any means. But one thing you want to make sure to do is you want to have your composition size, or sorry, your artboard size, the same size you want your eventual GIF to be, and work kind of on a one-to-one -one pixel scale there. So I'm doing this at 500 by 500 uh, for Giphy or whatever. Um, so that's what I have my artboard here as. Also, a couple other important notes, everything you want to animate separately, you want to have on its own layer. So we have this star in the background, and we have our text here in our layers panel. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, so each of those things will be animated separately, and so it'll be on separate layers when we bring in After Effects. Uh, the last important note about bringing files in from Illustrator or Photoshop is you want it to be in the RGB color mode. So in Illustrator, that's up here. We go File, Document Color Mode, CMYK. Uh, we want to make sure RGB is selected. And just as kind of a refresher, um, CMYK is often used for print, print applications. RGB is used for you know uh, digital applications, websites, videos. And since a GIF will be viewed uh, you know digitally, um, it's you know good to do that in the RGB file format. Also, After Effects doesn't work very well with the CMYK format. Things look kind of weird. The colors get kind of funny. So you want to make sure everything's in RGB. Okay. Um, so once we're happy with that, you know we hit save, and you know, it's all already saved out. Looks like. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring that file into After Effects and kind of work towards animating it. All right, so I am going over to After Effects, just uh, Command Tab here. And there's a number of different ways to bring things into After Effects. Um, so the uh, simplest one here, go File, um, Import, File, or Command I, or you can double click right here in your project panel. Either way, it'll open up one of these um, these nice, uh, you know, uh, binder folders for us. So I'm navigating here to my uh, reference materials, or to number three After Effects, the files that you guys have all downloaded. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and open the csagif.ai file. And I'm just gonna hit open. And it will kind of bring up this uh, little um, import options right here for me. So we have a couple different options here. Um, our first option is footage. So it just kind of imports it as like one uh, like solid image. But what we really want to do is import it as a composition. And that way it will import each of our layers, um, import each of our layers uh, as a separate layer within After Effects for animation. And that's the way that, you know, if you have a layered file, you want to bring those things in. So 
So we have some options for photo dimensions. For this, honestly, either, either of these will work. Um, layer size makes it a slightly more tidy file. Uh, but you know, don't worry too much about that um, you know, for these applications. So I hit OK. And we can see that here in my project panel, it has brought those things in. So we have this little um, colorful square. And those are compositions. They're similar to like an artboard uh, in Illustrator or like a file in Photoshop, something like that. Um, they're called compositions and after effects. They're kind of like these individual working files that we work with. And we have a folder um, called CSCA GIF layers. And if I scroll that down, we can see that we have our star layer and our text layer. And I can see up here at the very top, uh, you kind of get a preview of those as I click on them. And that's um, looking pretty good so far. So now we've brought our out artwork into After Effects. We want to think about animating it. So in order to open up that composition, we can just double click on it here in the project panel. And it'll open it up here. So we see, you know, a lot of things on our screen change all of a sudden. We have our layers down here in our timeline panel, and we have a preview of what our artwork looks like up here in the very middle. Um, and you know, if anyone has any trouble, doesn't see that, uh, you know, feel free to just holler out or put something in the chat. Um, otherwise, I will uh, just continue on. So I know there's a lot of stuff in After Effects, um, and it all means stuff is important. But the things we want to concentrate most are are on this timeline panel. That's where most of your work in After Effects is done. Um, and then we'll see how that's updated up here. Uh, you know, so in Photoshop, uh, in Illustrator, like you click on something and move it. Um, you know, in After Effects, you're kind of going back and forth between this panel and this panel and um, how things are affected that way. So we have our two different layers, right? We have our star and we have our text. And as I click on those, we can see that they're highlighted. And I can hit this little eyeball, right? We can turn things on and off. Um, all very exciting. Uh, kind of, the, it's, it's similar to your layer panel, right, in Photoshop or Illustrator. So it's some of the same stuff you would expect. Um, in there. Now, in order to animate them, um, it's not that different than what we just did uh, with Kendra's presentation with the timeline. So we have these little twirl downs, and uh, each of these layers is kind of an object with an after effects. And as we twirl them down, uh, we can see the attributes of that layer. So uh, we have to go into transform. So we have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. Um, and each of these things, anything with a little stopwatch next to it, is something you can keyframe in after effects which means it's something you can animate. So let's see that real quick, right? So I will click this little button next to rotation. So we'll just have the star kind of spin uh, throughout the rotation. It's nice to have some visual interest, right? Um, and so I'll click this right here and it'll make this little diamond. Um, like my thing's over here. This is my time, my time scrub here. So it has this little diamond and that is called a keyframe. And what a keyframe is, is like, so this is kind of like a grid, right? Of um, our time. So um, if you kind of think of it like a spreadsheet, so uh, we have, you know, at zero seconds, we have our rotation at zero degrees right here. And then we can just drag our playhead is what this thing is called right here. And so it just kind of moves forward in time. So we can take it up to five seconds or two seconds or whatever you want to do. And I can say, okay, I want my rotation to be at 90. And I can just type the numbers 90 there. I can scrub back and forth um, if I want to do it that way either way. So we kind of have this, you know, um, thinking of it as kind of like a, like a grid, like a, like a spreadsheet is kind of a, a good way to think about it. So at zero, our rotation is zero. At five seconds, our rotation is at 90. And then the computer um, does what is called tweening, which goes ahead and it does the math between that. So, in, so instead of doing frame by frame, right, so like, you know, five seconds is 150 frames. That's a lot of work. If I just wanted to rotate something, so I wouldn't have to be like, okay, like, you know, be two degrees here, be four degrees here. The computer goes ahead and does that math for me. So as I scrub back and forth, I can see that my rotation values are changing. And I can also see that the star is rotating here in my, my, uh, my composition panel. And that's pretty cool. And if I want to see it in real time, I can just hit the space bar. And I can go ahead and preview that. And then, uh, you know, it'll play forward right here. This is kind of, you know, this is either too, too fast, too slow. Uh, obviously, you can make your own judgments about how you want that to look. Um, a lot of it after effects, a lot of motion graphics, we're just kind of looking at stuff, tweaking it, seeing how it is. Um, so hopefully everybody is at this point um, right now. Um, if not, you know, you're in trouble, go ahead and shut out. Um, otherwise, I will just go ahead and move forward. All right. <laughs> All right, we're still we're still getting there. Okay, the swirl here um, is to link layers. It's kind of a little more advanced thing. 
but um, it's okay. We're gonna go through some other keyframing stuff, so you guys will have plenty of time to catch up uh, with that. But here we go. So we have this nice rotation right here. And um, that's pretty good, right? I mean, it's, it's fun as it is. Um, we want to make like a cool a cool loop for like Giphy or for Slack or something like that. Um, and so when you're looping things, you want it either to start or end on an identical frame or you want things to kind of animate in and then animate out. So we're going to have this animate in and then animate out. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of ways to do that, right? So we had like the sunshine was kind of moving, you know, back and forth across the frame. Um, for this one, we're going to do some scale animation. So, uh, you know, animating our scale is very similar to animating our rotation. So in order to turn on animation for a layer, so say, okay, After Effects, we're going to animate this thing. We have to click the little stopwatch right here. And um, that will, you know, kind of say, okay, After Effects, we're animating this, pay attention to this, and it'll turn blue. So I'll click that right now. And it'll make a keyframe right here for us. So we'll say, you know, 20 frames in. So up here are kind of our numbers, right? 10 frames, 20 frames, and then there's 30 frames for every second. Um, and, and the default for After Effects might be different, so it might look kind of different than this. So I'll just go ahead and go forward 20 frames in time, like this, and say, okay, at this time, 100%, so 100. And I can click right here to add a new keyframe for that. And then I will go back to the beginning right here and I will make it 0%. Okay, so now we're going from scale of zero within 20 frames, we get to scale of 100. I can kind of scrub forward with my timeline, kind of see how that looks right there. Not too, um, not too shabby. So if I hit the play button, the space bar, we can see how that looks like. It's not great yet, but we're getting there. Um, and then also we'll do a similar animation out at the very end right here. So at 10 frames left, Sorry, the 20 frames left right here. I will go ahead and click this keyframe to add a keyframe at 100. And then I will move over to five seconds here and I will type in the number zero to put my scale for zero. So I'll just play that back real quick and give some people some time to catch up if anyone is um, a little behind. So we have this right here. It is scaling in, scaling out. It's not awesome yet. But you know we're going to get there. We kind of get the basic idea, right? So it's going to scale up, and then it's just kind of like you know spin for a while. It's going to be spinning the entire time. It's going to spin for a while, then it's going to scale down, and then we're going to go ahead and do our loop um, at that point. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we want to do a similar animation on our text. So we kind of start from nothing, and then we kind of you know have all that build up. And then we have, um, you know, all that kind of collapse down and, uh, you know, be done. So we'll do something very similar on our text layer right here. I'll just twirl this layer down, twirl down transform. And uh, again, we'll just kind of go forward 20 frames here and click our keyframe for our scale. Go back to the beginning, type in the number zero uh, to scale up from zero here. And then I'll just do the same thing at the end here. Click this little diamond right here to add a new keyframe. Go to the very end and have that at zero. Okay, um, which is you know, the same thing we do with our star right here. We're just doing it again um, with that. All right, so I hit the play button. We can see everything is scaling up all together here. And then everything scales down. And then it kind of loops. And that is okay on its own. Um, one thing that is nice to do with motion that makes a lot of visual interest and makes things look a lot more complex is to stagger our animation. Um, and so, you know, this is pretty simple to do in After Effects. We can just select our layers, right, we have right here, and we can just kind of, sorry, select our keyframes, these are called keyframes, select our keyframes, and we can just move them over. So I'm just going to move these over about 10 frames right here. And so, you know, we think about this right as a grid, right? So, um, you know, it, it used after effects, like you can start to visualize this, but like at zero, we'll see the scale for the star starts, and then at 10 frames, the scale for the text starts. So um, I'll hit the play button right here. So the star comes in, then the text comes in, and then we'll move our keyframes at the end here as well. Um, and so then the text will animate out before the star does. So there's that. Um, 
Yep. And so we have a little bit of staggering animation right there. It adds some more visual interest. It adds some more complexity to the animation. Um, you know, and it's not too hard to do, just kind of moving our keyframes. So this is already looking, you know, pretty exciting, pretty good um, for what we wanted to right here. Does anyone have any questions about how we got to this point? Um, if not, we'll kind of finish off this animation and make it into a GIF. Oh, a question about the swirl. Yes, the swirl is for parenting layers. Um, it's actually the best feature of After Effects because it has the only bit of uh, whimsical UI design that they put in the entire program. So if you pull this out and don't hook it up to anything, it will kind of snap. Whoops, I did that wrong. Let me try that again. Take the swirl like that, and let me do this while I'm not playing this back. Um, it will kind of snap back in a fun little whip, which is, you know, you don't, you, you only get so much fun in After Effects, though, so is kind of what you get. <laughs> okay, um, so it seems like there's no questions here. So uh, one thing we'll notice is animation it looks kind of robotic. It looks kind of, um, doesn't look very natural. Things kind of like scale in and scale out in a way that's, that's not quite as fluid as we necessarily like it to. And there's a lot of like animation theory around why that is. Um, but After Effects has some kind of simple uh, features built in that helps you to just kind of make that a little bit smoother. So uh, it is called Ease, and if I just drag right here and select my keyframes, this is similar to if I'm selecting something in say Illustrator, I can just drag and all the blue ones here are selected. I can right click or control click on this and go to Keyframe Assistant and go to Easy Ease, or I can just hit the F9 button. It might be Function F9, uh, depending on, oops, it's just F9, somewhere around here. One of those things, um, I'll just go in, oh no, I've started playing things in iTunes. All right, watch out with the F9 button. It might, uh, might jump at you here. I usually do it this way, keep it resistant, easy ease, and it'll go ahead and add some smoothness to our, uh, to our animation there. I think I have, I have one of those like media keyboards where there's like a bunch of like fun buttons and stuff on them. So <laughs> be careful, your, your mileage may vary. Anyways, right clicking on it, going to, uh, here, we'll, we'll do that again real quick um, in case you didn't catch that. So I'm just right clicking or control clicking on these keyframes, going down to the very bottom, going to keyframe assistant and it pulls up this other menu for us. And then I'll just go up to easy ease. And then I click on that and it will turn our keyframes into these little hourglasses. Uh, they kind of let you know that that works, that you have easy ease applied to it. And now when I hit play, and this might, you know, your playback might not be so good on Zoom, so hopefully you can see this. Um, we kind of have a little bit more natural animation to it as it, as it animates in and out. Uh, and it looks a little bit smoother, it looks a little more fluid. Um, it's a pretty simple thing to add that really makes um, animation look uh, a lot nicer. And you know, there's much further you can go into this, right, if you really get into animation um, into your ease. But um, this is definitely a really great place to start with that. And so this is looking, um, you know, kind of like we want it to right now. Uh, After Effects is nice because, you know, unlike some of your animations in Photoshop, we can add a bunch of stuff to it. Um, you know, it's really easy to move things, to stagger things. We can add some more things to it, right? So I can just go in here and I can just, you know, have my, um, my text kind of like scale up and down a little bit. I can 90, it's like 100. Um, and just, you know, really quickly add some other animation to it um, as I want to. So I'm just going through and just going through back and forth on my scale values right here. So now, you know, I hit play, I kind of have this like pulsing look to the, uh, to the text in the middle here. And, you know, you can go, you can go crazy, right? You can have more than two layers. You can have a thousand layers if you want. You can stagger, you know, all sorts of things, add new colors, add new text. I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot further you can go with, with animation after effects, but um, everything kind of builds on the same basic idea of having a layer uh, right here in your timeline panel and just setting keyframes. Um, here on this stuff and you know I, I work in motion graphics all day and most of what I do is just setting keyframes just like we did here. Um, so uh, I don't have any questions we will go ahead and make this into a GIF. Uh, I assume at this point I've lost everyone uh, but hopefully hopefully a few of you are still uh, still with us here. Um, okay so if we want this to be a GIF uh, there are a number of different ways to do it. The simplest way uh, is to go up to our composition panel right here and go add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. So um, After Effects handles saving differently than what we're used to in Photoshop and Illustrator. Like when you save something on Illustrator, just go save, save the web devices, save as, something like that. And um, it just kind of creates a JPEG file or PNG file or whatever we have. And After Effects is kind of done in a separate system. Um, and you know, it's not better, it's not worse, it's, you know, it's just the way it is. 
um, and it, it adds some flexibility. So we can add it to render queue, which is a way to make videos, but one really easy thing to do um, is add it to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, which will actually open it up in a separate program called Adobe Media Encoder. So when you download After Effects, it also downloads Adobe Media Encoder, which is a program made just for uh, compressing and changing what type of videos you have in rendering videos. So this is a different format. Um, let's not, you know, get too worried about anything. Uh, so um, we kind of have these drop downs right here, you know, um, kind of Adobe code is something blue, you can click on it for more options. So to make it a GIF, um, and it'll say, you know, CSC a GIF or something like that, uh, we can click right here. And these are all of our different our presets for our, for our export. And yours might be, I don't know what it is, I think it might be on H.264 by default. Um, but you want to go ahead and take it up to animated GIF because, you know, what we're making is an animated GIF. So if you click on that, it'll go ahead and we can see right here that it's planning on doing a .gif file, which, you know, is what we want. Um, and this is all fine. Like at this point, we can just go ahead and hit play. Uh, hit, hit go right here. Um, okay, so we had a question about the rotation and scale keyframes. So at the beginning right here, our rotation and scale are both set to zero. But if we think about this as kind of a grid, right? So at time zero, we have rotation zero, scale of zero. Um, but as we move forward in time, so we get to say like frame 20 right here, we have our scale of 100 and our rotation of like 12.1 um, right here. So like if I go forward frame by frame and I'm hitting the page up, page down button, or you can hit command left and right uh, on your keyboard if you don't have those buttons, we can see that each frame is changing these values. And so what we do when we hit play is actually playing back each of these frames and it's playing back 30 of these frames per second. Um, and so that's what we kind of see as video, as this, this kind of, so it's not even anything associated, it's just playing 30 individual images per second on our screen. Um, and so yeah, when we hit play, right, these, these numbers aren't, aren't updating, so it might be kind of confusing. But if you know, we kind of scrub back and forth with our playhead, we can see these numbers are changing um, as we have it right here. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions? Yeah, feel free. So I'm just um, alt-tabbing back over to Adobe Media Encoder. So if you click on this right here, we can go into our advanced settings. Uh, and you know all these normal settings are fine, but if you want to like change something for some reason, you want to like change the size, you can. Uh, that's all in here. I'm going to just leave it as is because you know kind of our defaults here are just fine um, for this. Uh, you know if we're trying to really like tweak stuff with our file size, maybe we want to do that. We can crop things. But, um, I'm just going to go and hit our go button right here, which is this green, um, this green kind of play button. And it'll kind of preview down here at the bottom. It's going to go pretty quick because it is a, uh, you know, just a pretty simple um, GIF animation right here. And I will go ahead and find it here in my, oh, where did I even put that? Let me try this again. If you want to put it somewhere, okay, here we go. So I click on that right there. It shows it. And I think I like put it in some weird temporary folder. Um, here, <laughs> I'm going to duplicate this. So if you don't want it to be in some weird temporary folder, you click right here and you can kind of decide where this is going to go. So I'll just go ahead and put this in my reference materials, After Effects, um, you know, folder right here. It's a CSV GIF underscore one, and hit save. So uh, I uh, apologize, I kind of forgot to do that step previously. So we can kind of see right here, this is where it's gonna put it. So I hit the, the go button right there, same idea. And then I click right here, and we can kind of see right now it's already previewing um, our GIF file right here. And I can hit the space bar and kind of blow it up big, um, or you know, use it on Instagram or Giphy or you know, whatever else it is that we use, um, you know, our gifts for. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing you will notice about this is this is not a GIF with a transparent background. Um, After Effects in the Adobe Media Encoder do not export GIFs as transparent background uh, natively. You have to use some other stuff. So the easiest way to do that, well, the the simplest way, I guess, the uh, one way to do that is to export it as a movie and then bring that into Photoshop using some of the similar tools that Sasha showed us previously about making a photo into a GIF. Um, it can be kind of tedious, um, kind of walking around that way, um, but if you do. Also, if you're doing it a lot, there is a great plugin called GIF Gun that will do all this for you. So it's kind of a plugin right here. Um, and I think you have to save your file first. I'm just going to save this real quick. And you should always be saving. Saving thing. You see a gift that AAP. Oh, why is it doing this? I don't know. <laughs> oh no, it gave me an error. Okay, we're gonna try that one more time. Um, sorry, I don't know why we had an error there. Um, so I'm going to there. 
DSCA, yes, that AP. Okay, it's saved. I don't know what that problem was previously. Okay, so we have um, our plugin called Gift Gun. Um, and if you're doing a lot of gifts and after effects, this is definitely, it's like 30 bucks, I think, to buy it. It goes on sale occasionally. Um, but we can go to adjust our settings right here. Um, we can do, you know, our colors, we can do our frame rates, we can change all this sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll, 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 it'll really help to make our gifts and, and help to, to size them in a way. So we just click make GIF. It does a whole bunch of stuff. It renders our video for us. Uh, it'll make this lovely noise. And then it kind of has this little, like, you know, compression right here. Um, and then, you know, it'll, it'll get there. Um, and then we can have our GIF gun GIFs. And we can see we have a nice transparent background right here um, using, using this plugin. So if you are making a lot of these, uh, I definitely recommend doing that way. If you're only making a few occasionally, if you do need a transparent background, rendering out as a video out of After Effects and then bringing that back into Photoshop um, is kind of the, uh, the other way to do that, which is a lot more tedious and annoying, but um, that is okay. Okay, so that is kind of all I have for After Effects. Uh, certainly welcome any questions anybody has. Otherwise, I will go ahead and turn it back over to Susie to do uh, some talking about how we make it out of Keynote. Susie, are you there? I am here. I'm almost ready. Here we go. Great. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay, hi guys. I'm Susie Sprague, and um, I'm one of your uh, CSEA co-presidents this year. And um, I'm also a art director at um, Bath and Body Works, um, specializing in uh, Facebook and social media ads and display ads. And uh, basically, we do a lot of gifting. <laughs> so um, I, I really love uh, like animation, and I think it's so important to learn how to do it right. Um, and I'm going to teach you about how to do it wrong and how to cheat at it, because I think that. Um, it's, it can be really fast and easy um, to, to do, to take a, uh, a shortcut. Um, but you essentially need all of these, uh, you need to know exactly how they're made in order to be able to cheat well. <laughs> um, I hope my video isn't cutting out too badly. Um, bear with me, friends. So here we are. Um, I think one of the best reasons to use Keynote is because it can give you a leg up on making really great type animation with very little effort. So it's kind of a lot of pizzazz or not a lot of uh, time input into it. Um, so I'm just going to run through a couple of these. Like there's very interesting like text effects and video effects and um, it really it has a, a, a large arsenal of built in um, like just cool like plug and play demos that um, for the most part can make your life really easy. Um, sorry if this is running slow. I think my internet is slow today, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so here's a couple more. Come on, guys. <laughs> It's, I have this spinning ball of death. This is the worst. Um, here we go. So uh, I think one, another reason you use Keynote is that um, they, it does a few like really complicated things really simply. Um, where uh, it, in Photoshop and After Effects, you have to put a lot of effort into putting um, necessarily thinking through movement really uh, strategically, um, some of the uh, options within Keynote just let you go really fast. Sorry, this is finally just now catching up with me. Um, so using motion paths, moving, um, moving pieces in a really smooth way. Um, Keynote also has built-in easing, uh, which is nice because then you don't have to think about how to do it. <laughs> I also think that um, or one of my favorite ways to cheat is to uh, input another video into uh, your video. So essentially, if you think about videos as like sort of infinitely nestable, you can um, 
it just kind of expands the capabilities that you have. So um, these are just some interesting ways to do it. I think if it, when you really want to cheat and like impress somebody, if you add audio to anything, um, it automatically just boosts the um, like the appeal of it. Um, like I don't know, an extra like twenty percent, and people get super excited. Um, these, of course, don't want to play right now because my computer is very angry. But this is just a quick tip, anyways. It doesn't matter. Um, I also love cheating by using my phone. Uh, this little sucker has a lot of built in things to um, help you cheat like a pro. Um, for example, like all these different apps, half of them are free, maybe more. They're almost all um, excellent quality. And very rarely will they make you put like a big ugly watermark on them. But um, I like all of these. And, but my favorite is definitely Fix a Loop. Check that thing out. It's awesome. Um, so some of the effects within um, Keynote. Surely they want to play. Uh, oh, here we go. OK. So we're going to get into um, a demo in just a, a minute, but like really easy um, ways to do type effects that way. Okay, getting out of Keynote, getting into our folder, jumping into the item called Keynote Example. And so I have a pre-built file here. This will take not more than 10 minutes, just FYI. We're almost done. <laughs> wow. I hope yours is opening faster than mine is. <laughs> okay, Keynote. So one of the things you should know about Keynote is that it's pretty lightweight. It's really, um, it's, it's actually an easy way to do a lot of things. Um, you do have capabilities to use their art tools, like if you wanna make a shape and make text, in Photoshop or Illustrator, I would prefer Illustrator in this case, it's super easy to do so. All you do is copy and paste. I think in the example of this Keynote that I'm working on, I think I just drew them all in Keynote um, because they have that capability too. Let's see. Okay, this is just not opening. Hold on. <laughs> hmm. I guess I might have to quit Keynote and restart uh, this program. Very sorry. Actually, if any of my other co-presenters would like to um, open this file and share their screen, they're very welcome to. But we'll see if this works. Um, another note about Keynote is that, um, of course, it is um, an Apple product um, and it has, so of course it's, it's a little bit nicer than PowerPoint for that reason. Um, but anything that you, you do essentially in Keynote, you can basically do the same thing in PowerPoint and it'll work the same. Okay, crossing my fingers. It looks like it's almost done opening. Yay, here we go. Okay, 
Hopefully you're all op now open in Keynote and everything's going okay. And um, let's see. Now that we are here, um, you'll notice it's really big. I usually shrink down my panel just a little bit using the zoom on the top left. Um, if you open up the view panel in the top now, you can see show presenter notes. Literally all the things that we're going to do right now are listed out just below. So um, if you really, if you want to do fun stuff in Keynote, the most important thing you should know is that like changing your artboard size is pretty important. Um, and I always do that first because Keynote does this cute little thing where it like it scales for you if you change it later. So do it first and you won't have to worry about it. So all you have to do is go this little panel on the top right. Oh, I'm going to hit upgrade. Yep. So um, the document on the top right toggle and then click into slide size and then you have the slide size that you want to add. So say for example, I decided I want to make this 500 by 500. It's going to actually just scale this for me. So now it's 500 by 500, but it, all my things are basically the same size, which is kind of a, a neat little nifty thing, unless you don't want it to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so Keynote gets a, potentially like a bad rap because you don't think you can do like um, kerning and letter spacing, but of course actually you can um, if, you, if you're passionate about Keynote, it's worth learning how to do it. Um, it might be less worth learning how to do it if I'm going to keep, uh, if it's going to go so slow. <laughs> um, you guys, I'm sorry. I should apologize. I have been, uh, my computer's been working a lot all day and, uh, she probably should have gotten a nice little restart before I started this. <laughs> Um, well, let's see. The spinny ball of death, she comes for us all. I bet I can do this without showing you. <laughs> so first, let's skip kerning line height. Not doing it. Um, if you want to learn how to do object animations, the first thing you'll do is click on the heart and go into your animate panel and then find the drop down that says essentially um, what the different options are. I am currently spin spinning and I am unable to show you how to do that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to quit again. This is bad. Oh, it just caught up. It just caught up. It heard that I was going to quit. <laughs> okay, guys, maybe for real now. So we have our object. We are in our animate panel. We are going to build her in. We're going to add an effect. We are going to pick pulse because I already decided it was like a good one. Um, so pulse is hanging out. Where? Oh, I'm an idiot. Pulse is not a build in, you guys. It's an action. There are three different things to pick from. Build in is sort of what it sounds like. You start from zero, it becomes a thing. Action means it's already there and you're just adding an effect to it. So, action, add an effect, pulse. So glad we worked through that together. <laughs> so um, the settings, um, I'm gonna pick six seconds. I'm gonna pick six pulses and the scale 110% is nice. I'm gonna leave that exactly as is. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick my next object. Care the most. This I would like to actually build in. So this one's for real build-in. Um, it's gonna build in with the blur. So blur is found here under appear and move. 
you can pick any of these things, but I like blur. And then um, I'm gonna change the duration to one second, clicking down. And I am going to use this, see this very hidden little panel? This panel is everything. Um, so now that you have it, it's, uh, it's pretty critical that all the things that are done here. So um, I also usually don't tuck it away unless I need to. So get used to having this guy out and ready to rock. So you have this very object oriented drawing or um, animation. Okay, so you can click on your shape. Give them a significant delay. Okay, and then want to change the start from the start from uh, on click to after transition. And I'm going to change care from being on click to after build. And, and then, you know what, I'm just gonna preview it. Let's look at what we just did. Um, you can preview it a couple of different ways. You can hit preview here in the top right. And, you can click it per piece. So if you want to see what blur looks like, um, the problem I'm seeing here is it needs to go with. So now that if I change care to being built with the shape, then we're good to go. Um, I'm going to add a 0.5 delay because that was the note I added to myself earlier. And so now we're getting there. So we've got a build in and a build in. And then I'm going to do one more build in. Let's do Tito Malega. Let's add a build in that says that's uh, the typewriter effect. So uh, it's a good one. So we're going to let that. One second default is fine. Um, we're going to change it to with build one, and we're going to leave no delay. And so we can preview that again. So we're pulsing, carrying the most, and to the later. Okay. So that's the first three parts. Um, to make this loop really nicely, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to do a build out and let that um, be a dissolve. Dissolve is found here in appear and move. Um, and I'm also going to do the same thing to Tito. That's going to build out by navigating through this little happy panel over here. Dissolve. And I'm going to select both of these two things using my build order panel. I'm going to change it to um, not actually that. It's going to be with. Oh, wait, no, of course it's not. It's going to be after. Because you can't do uh, dissolve. If you're, uh, if you're building in, you can't also build out at the same time. It kind of makes sense when you think about it, like one thing and then the second thing. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, I think we're almost there. So let's preview this again. Okay, so I want this to actually dissolve to um, dissolve out with his little buddy. So they dissolve out at the same time. That's nice. I think everybody's matching up correctly. All right, 
One more preview and then we're exporting. Oh, you know, I forgot to add a d delay here. Kara needs to delay 2.5, which you can type in. You don't have to hit the button. Beautiful. Okay. Um, okay, so we've done it. We uh, we did all the things. Now we um, I need my top panel to come back to me. There we go. So I'm going to hit File, Export, and I'm going to export to Movie. Um, I could also do an animated GIF from here. They work about the same. Um, if you uh, want to export with transparency, you'll, you're better off using a different program. Um, this is better for flat things. Um, so right now, my document is set to 500 by 500. So it doesn't remember that because it's not brilliant. Uh, but you are. You are brilliant, and you know that um, you can change the resolution right here. Um, everything else here is you don't need to worry about. It's only that one resolution pane. Um, most often that I use this is for 1080 by 1080, and it's actually really simple because there is one that's preset for 1080, which is great. Okay, so I just hit export, and um, I'm going to put B2 after this, and, and then I'm going to go check it out, see if I did okay. And open it up. And look, it's a video. Oh, you know what? Do you see it's too long? Because I did something wrong. There's one very last critical part. <laughs> um, so we talked about object manipulation, and those have animations. Um, there's also frame animations. Um, you usually see that as like kind of like gaudy PowerPoint you know, frame transitions. But this one's actually really important. It's, um, you can do cool things with this um, transition effect, but mostly you just have to change the start transition from on click to automatically. And then your timeline essentially here matches what you've exported. Otherwise it adds like six seconds of dead space at the end. And nobody wants that. So now that I realize what I did wrong, I'm going to export again, export the movie using my custom size. You can also make it smaller if you'd be up for that. Um, I'm going to do three. And here she goes. And that's it. So this is the, the right size and the right length. And that's all the things. So I think we did it. But if you guys have any questions on what I just went through in Keynote, um, just let me know. I'm happy to talk through it right now. And um, also, it's time for our Q&A. Whoever hung with us for all this whole time, you guys are amazing. Um, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for, um, thanks for being part of this, uh, our new, our first ever animation workshop. <laughs> I had fun personally. Oh, go for it. No, I had, I said I had fun. Oh, you had fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. I think we all had fun. I <laughs> think this is cool. Uh, sorry, I went a little long guys, but um, you know, there was a lot to learn and there's like so much more to learn. Um, I think we really enjoyed uh, like sharing this kind of info and content with you guys. And um, like, I think we're going to send out a survey probably tomorrow morning, afternoon ish. Um, just like 
seeing what you guys thought. Please be honest and open. It's going to be completely anonymous. And um, <laughs> let us know if there's other topics you guys would be interested in going for because we, we kind of think this is great. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Yeah, and I just want to give a quick shout out to all the presenters and just thank you guys so much to Susie, Sasha, Kendry, and Elliot. You guys are what made this all happen and come together. So thank you guys again for sharing all of your knowledge with all of us tonight.